plant medicine was a great in your face boom here's your chance to remember but we can get there from all different kinds of ways and get there through meditation through this we're all given the opportunity to remember and most of us are too busy trying to fill it up with trying to fill it up that we don't have the chance to sit down and, and see what this is about This is synchronicity. This is synchronicity. This is synchronicity. This is Welcome to episode 87 of Synchronicity. My guest this week is Gerard Powell, founder of Arrhythmia, which is a medically licensed uh, plant medicine place in Costa Rica. And you will hear all about Rhythmia in this episode. Gerard is a fascinating dude. Um, I usually wait till a little bit later to introduce the guest, but I'm just going to go right into it. Um, not too long ago, Gerard sold his last company for $94 million in cash. You will hear this story. Um, was incredibly wealthy, incredibly powerful, incredibly successful in the world of business, um, but was miserably unhappy, suicidal. You'll hear all of this in the episode, but really was in a very shitty position. And what's interesting about his position is, as insane as it sounds to those of us who have not uh, accrued massive amounts of material wealth. <clears throat> this is a regular, a fairly common story. People who reach the upper echelons of their career, of the financial world, of the power world, um, they find that the equation doesn't necessarily add up. That they're happy all of a sudden, and that everything is great because they achieve what they want wanted. So this is a story that I think is applicable not only for someone who has made a crap load of money. <clears throat> excuse me, or ch achieved a lot in their life, but rather anyone who's dealing with, you know, the grass is always greener or I'll have enough when or if only. Um, and Gerard has a very dramatic story um, of how this impacted his life. And some of us need that. Some of us need uh, these very dramatic happenings uh, to kind of wake us up to what's going on. And some of us don't. The other thing this episode is clearly about um, is plant medicine, um, kind of the more symbolic and esoteric <clears throat> aspects of uh, reality and how we all essentially possess an innate wisdom within us um, that can guide us and help us in a lot of ways. And, you know, something that's been emerging, you know, throughout this podcast, but especially recently is the idea of synchronicity being something that confirms what's going on in your life rather than just some weird thing that's like, what is going on? Like, why are these things happening? What is, <laughs> I don't understand. But the practical benefits of synchronicity. And Gerard has a very interesting story relating to him being on cocaine, Deepak Chopra, and ayahuasca. So stay tuned for that story. Okay, that's it about Gerard. I, I'm gonna get right to the episode in just a second. Also, you know, before I'm actually done speaking about Gerard, I want to say this. I've spoken now to almost 100 people. You haven't heard all, every episode that's come out on Synchronicity. Gerard really does stand out as one of the most authentic, um, kind, open-hearted, open-minded people that I've spoken to in all of these episodes. Um, you know, we had a, a Zoom call, um, and which is why the quality is a little bit different on this one. It's all in a single track. I, most of you probably won't even notice that. But if you do, that's what's going on. Um, but I was looking at him. We were we were vibing. He's just a really cool dude. So uh, I think this is this is certainly a, a top five episode for me. Um, I really hope you guys enjoy it. I want to say a quick thank you to the people who have contributed on <clears throat> Patreon. I got a frog in my throat this intro. Sorry. I like it. I'm keeping it. You're going to have to deal with the coughing. Uh, but thank you to the people who have donated. There's been a few people donating or contributing on Patreon, uh, which is patreon.com slash synchronicity. They've contributed at the get this music level. So any music you hear in this podcast is mine. It's like very few exceptions. One is on the Duncan Trussell episode where I play a Prince song and they muted that on YouTube. Thanks, YouTube. 
Thank you. Uh, uh, but everything else you hear is my music. Um, so if you want to hear or download or stream anything that you have heard in its entirety without me talking over it or someone else talking over it, uh, you can contribute on Patreon and I will give you access to that music. I also have an EP coming out later this year and I'm not going to talk about it on the intro. I will talk about it on the outro, but Creative Evolution... The course I designed to help you start, maintain, and sustain a creative practice. Uh, I will have details on that later in this episode at the end. It's launching in June. Michael Donovan is helping me with the landing page. Michael Donovan is fucking awesome. Check out his podcast on MindPod Network, Walking Home. Uh, original MindPod Network, dude. Super cool. He's helping me design the landing page for Creative Evolution. It's going to look really cool. I'm really happy with what's emerged. All of the beta course people were instrumental uh, in helping me do it. I got some great feedback, uh, tweaked it to the point where I'm really happy with it. So with that, now let's take a deep breath in, out. I'm going to start doing that more and more. Uh, Without further ado, here is the wonderfully lovely, compassionate, open-minded, open-hearted Gerard Thank you so much Thank for you. doing this. Uh, I'm super excited. Um, so I figured a good place to get started. Um, there's a lot of different angles for what you're doing down in Rhythmia, but I, I thought it might be nice if you could give kind of a loose origin story sure. of yourself and kind of how you came to be where you are now. I thought that would be a cool place to start. Perfect. So yeah, uh, feel free to take okay. it. Um, <laughs> I didn't even know her. So, yeah. Uh, well, my story of her, the story of how Rhythmia uh, came uh, into being was uh, that I had been a, a very troubled guy. I, uh, I, I was really uh, super successful, I guess, in certain ways at business. And, and uh, I, I was leading a life that was uh, super false and super fake, and uh, and you know I I I had just sold a company. My last company sold for about ninety four million in cash, and I I was uh, at the low of my happiness. I've never been more unhappy in my life. I had tried to commit suicide a couple times. I uh, I was an alcoholic. I was addicted to injectable Demerol, which is like a, a heroin, and um, and I was just completely out of control and, and yet functioning in business. I was, I was highly functioning in, in business, uh, but in life I was just destroyed. I was, I was, it was touch and go every day as to whether or not uh, I thought I was going to live. Mm. And, and uh, you know, the, the, uh, the thing was I was just out of places to turn. I had been to, a very expensive rehab in Malibu, California. I had been to Agape Spiritual Center and made friends with Michael Beckwith and heard metaphysical things for the first time in my life. And that was making sense to me, but I wasn't feeling it. I mean, it, I, I understood the concept of love, but I had no feeling for what love meant in mm. any way. And so uh, one thing led to another, and it's through a series of, of, of calamities, I guess. I, I wound up in Costa Rica in... Uh, and at a place that, that did this plant medicine and I, I did this medicine and, and, you know, I got shot into, into way out into the universe and, mm. and, and taken on a tour and saw where I was sexually molested when I was three years old by my grandfather. Mm. And that kind of explained everything to me. And, uh, and, and in these journeys, they, the, this first journey, it, it, it showed me who I had become the, the, cause I knew that I was an asshole. I just didn't know, to what extent, you know, I, <laughs> yeah, I didn't know sure. I was like in the top five assholes of all time. And it, <laughs> it, 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 it bounced me out and it showed me who I was really. And, and that was super sad. It showed me why I was that way. And that made me feel a little bit better. But, uh, but my soul actually made me make an agreement with it that, that, that I couldn't, continue like I was continuing and that 
and made me promise that I would bring it with me for the rest of my life and that if I was in conflict with it, I would listen to it and not me. Mm. And, and it really made me say that before it would help me uh, in, the, in, in the journey. It wouldn't even help me until I agreed to those, to those, to those rules. And so I, I did agree to it. And at the, end of the, at the end of this journey, I merged back with my soul and, and, and uh, the universe gave me a brand new heart. And so that next day, honestly, was the first day of, of my whole life. And within two months, I had bought this place here in, in Costa Rica to do this for other people. And this is just the truth. It sounds like some kind of story, but it's just the friggin' truth. It's, it is what it is. And I, I bought the place and I, I did most, I did another, another couple hundred of these journeys and I recorded everything that was said in every single journey. And, and we're actually doing the same thing now that was done for me, for people. And this is what's crazy that, that we're the only place I believe in the world that uh, electronically self reports what, what happens. So when people leave, they get this survey and, and 89 or 88.56% as of today of the people who walk through the door report that they have that same soul merge uh, while they were here. They call it a, it's a life changing miracle while they were here mm-hmm. that they merged with their soul again. And so we're like, uh, we created a place where that happened. <laughs> yeah. So weird. I know it's so weird to even say it. You're probably thinking, oh, God, I got a doozy here. Uh, I'm not. I, so to give you some idea of why I'm not thinking that is I'm really at the nexus point of making what you're talking about not seem weird um, okay. and normalizing this type of stuff. So whether we're talking about miracles or imprinting reality with kind of these metaphysical concepts and really the interplay between our internal worlds and external reality, that's what I'm fascinated with. And a lot of these experiences that you're describing um, well, I haven't taken, are you talking about ayahuasca? Was this ayahuasca? Yeah. Okay, cool. One of them. Yeah. So I, I've never done DMT. I've never done ayahuasca, but I have had experiences, um, where I've received incredible downloads, uh, that I didn't ask for. I didn't know that they were happening. Some prompted by psychedelic, uh, experiences with LSD and mushrooms. Um, but sometimes not sometimes meditative experiences. And I'm talking about really weird shit too. So like, I remember getting a big download, waking up the next day and knowing all the Sanskrit names for the chakra system. (laughs) Waking up, Muladhar, Svadasana, Manipura, like literally, well, like how do you explain that? So at a certain point you have to say like, what the fuck is going on? Maybe reality isn't what I thought it was. Maybe there's some other game going on here. So to, to backtrack a little bit, because I think this is a very, there's a similar thread that I've noticed from a lot of people who have hit either career, the upper echelons of career or money or success or fame, whatever it is. Um, sometimes people just hit it without trying or striving or thinking that it's going to make them happy and they find themselves and they're not happy. But sometimes people really think that this is what's going to make me happy. I'll get this next thing. I'll get this next benchmark. And then finally, I will have arrived and been happy. What ultimately happens, whether that's a relationship, money, job, power, fame, it's not. It's not the thing that is really going to make you fulfilled. Now, we can get into what does actually make us fulfilled a little bit later in this episode, but this is something I think is a great place to start with because you made a shitload of money. You had more money than most people will ever see in their entire lifetimes. Uh, You know, if they combined many of their lives together, they probably wouldn't have that much money. So I think It is a very important thing to talk about how happiness isn't something that you can buy. And we know this, we've heard the the, the platitudes about it, but that from an experiential level, you've gone through this. Could you walk me through that when you're basically you know swimming in the land of like pleasure and you know whatever you want, what what did it feel like though? I mean, what what you were describing, you were suicidal, you had attempted suicide. Like what was leading you to this point? You had a family. I mean, like what, I would love to get some insight into this, especially for people listening who are maybe on this path, you know, and maybe think that this next thing is going to make them happy. So, yeah. I have to tell you, it was, it was funny that uh, I, I have a friend that, that sold his company as well. And, and uh, you know, he, he had a bunch of money too. And we always used to say that anybody 
uh, who thinks money is going to make them happy hasn't made any because <laughs> it's <laughs> so it's such a downer. It is uh, if you're if you're and I really believe this. I believe that something happens to us uh, between you know when we're conceived and about five years old, and it makes us split from our soul. And this is all stuff that the moon told me, right? This sounds crazy, but this is the truth. This is who talks to me when I go out there. So the moon I is, love it. I fucking love it, the, man. <laughs> this is the moon story, not mine. If you're a mad, playful type, <laughs> don't yell at her, you know. But, but, uh, but she said that, that we all split between when we're conceived and five years old and we're designed to split. And that all of this pain, suffering, disease, uh, addictions, depression all is a result of the split with our soul and that until that but we're designed to because if we ever remembered this then the lessons of this life couldn't couldn't work to expand us so right so so after we did like that crazy work and now we want to put ourselves back with our soul there's no amount of money that can fill the hole that when you're separate from your soul there's no amount of booze there's no amount of sex there's no amount of of drugs, there's no amount of of like uh, extreme sports. There's nothing that's going to fill that hole, the hole that's felt from the loss of oneself. Mm. There's nothing. So, so it doesn't matter if you're filling it up with trying to fill it up. That's one thing people like. Doesn't matter if you actually get it. It has the same. <laughs> you know, if you're just some people fill that void with trying to fill it up. Right. That's a great point. That's a great. I'm going to just work hard and work hard, and I never seem to get what I. You know, I never, the, the $10 million check always eludes me, but I'm still in the struggle. Well, the, the guy that's, that's getting it is trying to fill it up with just another thing that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. It, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Everybody's in the, uh, everybody's in that same place. And then we are all given the opportunity to remember, like for, for me, um, it had to get super extreme. And then I, I came down here and did the plant medicine was a great in your face, boom, here's your chance to remember. But we can get there from all different kinds of ways and get there through meditation and through this. We're all given the opportunity to remember and most of us are too busy trying to fill it up with trying to fill it up that we don't have the chance to sit down and, and see what this is about. Mm. You know? Mm, that I mean, that's so wonderfully put that the striving in and of itself can be the thing that we're holding us from this thing. So I love this idea of our soul, us kind of, and, and like, I love that you also pointed out, this isn't like a malfunction. It's not yeah. like we split off. And this is what I often tell people about reincarnation. And I don't remember past lives. I believe in reincarnation for various reasons, but I tell them like, if you could remember every single past incarnation you had, first of all, let's start at point A, it would be overwhelming and terrifying and awful. Imagine if you had to remember each death you've had oh vividly. <laughs> oh my God, it'd be a nightmare. Like maybe a little bit when you're on plant medicine and you're having a trip or something, you can get a little glimpse of it. Yeah. That's okay. But if just yeah. like consciously you had to hold that. Oh, so yeah. there, there is a reason that, you know, for the skeptic who says, oh, well, this is all well and good that these stories are emerging, but there is a function here. And the right. function, as you're describing, of these soul disin it kind of engaging is that we get, I personally believe, no one told me this, maybe I got to download somewhere. I personally believe we choose to incarnate on this planet so. in this time. I, I think that that is not something that is thrust upon us. I don't think that it's some evil retribution for us being karmically evil, whatever it is. I think no. that we're here to learn things. And I think this is relatively plain to see because if you look at the problems that we share individually, collectively, and globally, they're all kind of the same. It's not like Absolutely. someone has some radically different, <laughs> oh, I, I got 10 arms growing out of my head. That's my biggest concern. It's like, no, we all kind of struggle with the same levels of suffering. So we're put in this world that we choose to be here and suffering and difficulties and trauma, we use these things as opposing forces to kind of get to the real essence of truth of what is going on. And, and what's amazing to me is that now in this point in time, we don't have to talk about how time is an illusion, but we can talk about at this point in historical time, what seems to be happening is so many people are waking up to this with the aid of plant medicines, with the aid of meditation, with the aid of just people being born who seem to intuitively grok this stuff and get yeah. it without the trials and tribulations. It's incredible. I so, I mean, 
let's let's talk a little bit about some of maybe the information and downloads that you've gotten through your many voyages because like I can tell right off the bat from talking to you just like looking into your eyes and communicating with you I you know have some level of clairsentience and I can actually feel this stuff like you get it you're doing what you're here to do it is shines through in your entire being it's the same type of brightness i've worked um with rondas for a long time it's the same type of thing that manifests and emanates from someone who really is aligned with what they're doing um so what what were some of the early kind of experiences you had and what was it like a experiencing probably this otherworldly stuff like you're saying and then to me this is the most important thing what was it like integrating it and putting it into practice in your day-to-day life? Not just having these experiences being like, oh, that was crazy, back to whatever, but really being like, I just got shown some stuff. I just got some stuff. How do I integrate that back into my life? Interesting point. The, uh, the, you know, the, the experiences themselves all, all revolved around this unification with the soul. And then, mm-hmm. and then you know, I, I honestly thought, you know, I was so super fucked up that, that I thought, oh my God, I'm the only guy in the world that feels this way. And then, <laughs> yeah, sure, you're sure. The only one, you know, that, and then, and then this, the moon showed me that, that almost everybody that hasn't specifically done the practice to, to, to remerge with their soul feels a, a variant of the same thing or a grade, a gradient of the same mm. thing. Some, some, you know, whether it's uh whether you're a wall street guy and you're uh you know, stuck in, in, in your job and unhappy and, you know, think it's the job, but it's really this thing that, that there's no job, you know, the job of being Superman wouldn't do, wouldn't do it, but you don't know it because we're experiential people. So the thing is we very rarely have the ability to learn from our neighbor. It's a right. very rare thing. So we have to keep getting, you know, like when I was a kid and I was making money, like one million didn't do it. Let's try two. Well, you do that, you do that eighty-nine times, and and it still doesn't work. And it takes a long time for you to catch on that this is not working. That this isn't working, right? So, mm. so most of my journeys initially, my my the the craziest thing is that when I was when I was an addict and I was an asshole, but I wasn't like a normal. I'm telling you that my energy was so bad I could walk into a CVS and piss people off. People would wow. be like. I don't like this guy. Wow. That's the kind of energy I had. I was in a fist fight every time I went out for a drink. I wow. was like just a really bad, really bad guy with bad energy. And yet I consider myself a, a good Catholic. So, so, <laughs> so Not mutually exclusive, apparently. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so this one time I went to the moon and I'm like, uh, I got to talk to Jesus. And I just, I said, oh, awesome. You know, I was like, Jesus, you know, in the, and the shaman say, said, just say his name. And I said his name and Jesus appeared. He was on the moon and, and, and he said some crazy shit to me. He said, uh, and he said that, uh, I said, is this, because I thought that the plant medicine was kind of like voodoo. And, you know, I was really a raised Catholic in spite of all this shit. Mm. Uh, and I said, hey, is this okay? And he said, you know, he basically said that the more people do the medicine, the more that they see themselves, the more they see themselves, the more honest they become, the more honest they become, the more they become like him and with the ability to live like he lived. And it was just this beautiful shit. Mm, and mm. Then we got done and I was like, hey, how am I doing? I said to him, you know, like I was pretty fucking cocky. I'm like, you know, you know, I was so bad. And now I'm so good. So I'm like, not like in my mind. You know, yeah, no, I get it. Terrible. And now I went to just bad. So it's by contrast. It's great. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, how am I doing? And he goes, he goes, Jerry, you're smarter than that. You know that I'm not watching you. You're watching you. Mm-hmm. And he fucking left. And I thought, holy fuck. This whole thing, all of this shit is between me and me. Mm-hmm. And all of it is between you and you. And all of it is between her and her. And all of it is between him and him. And it's really a strange feeling when, when the clarity of that hits home, you know, and that, that hits home that it's, it's about you and you and, 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 and how you are with that relationship allows all of these other relationships to flourish. It's crazy right. shit. It's That's crazy right. shit, right? As for me, it was crazy. <laughs> and, uh, and so I was like, uh, and I was like, that was one of my nuttiest, one of my nuttiest ones. And then, and then when, what was, what was really interesting about this is that when I got back the first time I did this plant medicine, I got back from Costa Rica, 
And, and I thought, you know, the, I lived for the first day of my life was the next day after I saw this stuff. It was really the first day of my life. I was, I was like, uh, I was like a, a kid. Mm. I was jumping and light as a feather. And like, I really came home a different dude in about three days into it. I started getting scared shit because it, it looked like it was sticking. So, because it is in the past as a Catholic, uh, I remember being a kid and I, I was in a pretty violent household. So I was, I was always in trouble and all that kind of stuff. Right? Mm. And I remember being, you know, beat up by my father and stuff like that. And I would go to these charismatic conferences and have these like spiritual experiences. And then, it's 72 hours. 72 hours later, it's like it never happened. Right. It never even occurred. Right. So I do this plan. I get home and I'm thinking, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'm waiting for the thing to come stop down. Right. For it to wear off or like maybe it will just come out of my body. Maybe it's the plant and the plant is, is going to dissipate, you know, it has a shelf life. It's going to go <laughs> yeah. a day yeah. or two. And it didn't. And that really freaked me out because. Mm. Here I was, and this is the, the truth, I was, I was back home. The things that I used to like, I no longer liked. I didn't want to drink. And not that I couldn't drink. I just didn't want to be drinking. The desire was gone, yeah. I was smoking two packs of cigarettes a day since I was 13, and I quit no cigarettes and no cigarettes and didn't want to smoke. Didn't want to smoke weed, didn't want to do cocaine, didn't want to chase strippers, didn't want to. And so I'm sitting in my house going, well, what do I do? Like, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> they just took everything that I know away from me. So now what, what do I do? And it was this really strange feeling of, of I actually called my shaman and I said, Magina, what the fuck did you do to me? Because, <laughs> because you ruined me. Mm. And, and he kind of walked me through that, that it would be okay. And, 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 and it really took me some time. It took me about two weeks just even to get to the point where I wanted to to go see friends or be in the mm -hmm. world. Because my head, my eggs were scrambled. I didn't, I couldn't put it together. And uh, it turns out that it was the best thing that's ever happened to me. And that, that, so now at the place that we built, I don't know if you, if you have met Brandy, my girlfriend, if you know about Brandy or anything, but I've just spoken to her via email. Okay. She's a, she's a sweetheart, but what we like the place that we created here. Uh, not only it, it's, it's, of course, it's farm to table, organic food, yoga by Shiva Ray, the answer is you by Michael Beckwith, uh, our classes, this class about your miracle, this workshop, uh, all these plant, you get four or five plant integrations, you get four or five journeys, you get transformational breath work, and then you get all of these integration classes and programs. So when you come home, it's it's an easier transition. Um, <laughs> you're not just like your ego and everything is totally shot. destroyed and you're like, shot. what the fuck? Right. What do I do? <laughs> you know, like, uh, will I ever make rent again? Like all these <laughs> right, things, right, right, things right. go in your head, right? You know? And so we 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 actually it was it was the moon's doing, right? That when we when we decided to do this thing, this is like journey two. I decided this is what to do. Actually the medicine told us what to do, what, what building to buy, what to pay for it, the, this whole thing, what to charge, what people to get involved. And like, we just did it. And, and while I was doing it, I was thinking, you know, this is either crazy. <laughs> this is like, this is, you know, in the book someday, they'll say, and, and on day 48, he went crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Doing, you know? And either we're going crazy or this is supposed to be, and we never lost faith because, because, because the every other thing the medicine was telling us would be happening. That's it would, right. It would happen. It would just happen. And I mean, strange stuff would out of the blue. You know what I'm talking about? Just impossible that this could occur. And boom, like tomorrow, a blue duck is going to show up in your living room. Tomorrow, blue duck is in the living room. You're like, oh my God, right? Like that kind of crazy. Yes. Against all that stuff. So it kept us uh, honest and, and, and thing and, and, and we just stayed there and she's been amazing for, for me. And this is what's so crazy. Before I did the medicine, I would, sometimes there'd be days where I would have like sex with five girls. I was crazy. I was like, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I had a big problem and I couldn't even be with one, with one, I couldn't do it. And, uh, you know, the day after the medicine, I was like, okay, now I can 
be with one, and uh, I, you know, I fell in love. I'm engaged. I'm monogamous, and not like golf course monogamous. Not like, <laughs> not like monogamous until you're past the ninth hole and she can't see you. Like, really? <laughs> you know, yeah. like, I'm in a monogamous thing. Happy you know? relationship. Yeah. A real, real, real thing. You know. So yeah. something is emerging in this conversation, which I, I've has been at the forefront of my consciousness, especially in the past couple of months or so, but really for the past 15, 16, 17 years, um, which is to me, this idea of this reharmonization of the feminine divine and the principles that are emerging throughout the world. And we're seeing this uh, explicitly with something like ayahuasca or these plant medicines, which come from mother earth. You keep referring to conversations with the moon. And I don't like to get too gender specific when we're talking about divine nature, because I think it can conflate certain ideas, but there are principles associated with the lunar and there are principles associated with the solar Um, and a lot of these things it's interesting like when you're talking about having conversations with the moon and with jesus i've had this happen to me too it's very rare (laughs) that i can actually speak to someone else where they either think they know what i'm talking about and maybe you're just in some other world but they actually know kind of what i'm talking about which i can get the sense that you definitely do so i i love this because this is something that When I meet people who are really involved with deep inner work of any kind, whether that is through plant medicines, whether it's through a particular lineage like Tibetan Buddhism or Bhakti Yoga, whatever it is, there's a few qualities that tend to emerge. Uh, One is everyone starts to recognize the unity of all of these paths and that while there are many paths up the mountain, the view is exactly the same. That's one thing. The other thing I've noticed is that there is this ineffable joy and optimism, the deeper someone has gone in terms of understanding either the cosmology of the universe or why we're here, the meaning of life, whatever it is. And it's the opposite of this nihilistic cynicism, which can often kind of culturally take hold of what's going on. So I I have a couple questions here. When you describe talking to the moon, what exactly is that like for you? Um, What have you conceptually pulled away from it and also experientially? Because this is a fascinating thing that I, every time you say it, it, it piques my interest. Uh, it's crazy is that I actually physically flew, left my body and crashed into the moon and, and, and got then a, a screen, like this screen that, that we're looking at. It yeah. With the picture of the moon and my feet sticking out of it live <laughs> where I could wiggle my feet and it would wiggle on the screen <laughs> and, and a cursor and she said, she would type, hi, I'm Mrs. Moon. It's a, it's a feminine entity. Good. I'm glad I got that. I, I <laughs> wanted to make sure I wasn't making that up. Okay. And, and the sun is a he. The sun yes. is a he. And yes. the moon is a she. And it really is a she. And this, totally. This, this, we, what, and this is again, my, my, uh, my fiance, Brandy, she always, you know, everything that you can, you can say, hey, that's a Snickers bar. And she goes, she'd somehow trace it back to the balancing of the, the divine feminine. You love know, like, it. Oh, I love it. <laughs> everything goes back there. Me, I'm, I'm more selective than that, but, but it does appear to be that the cynicism is a masculine thing and this love, the, the acknowledgement that everything is together. And when you're on that medicine and, and you're in divinity and you see that, that the mother's the mother mm. and that all of this is held together by love, this whole thing, and not just the words, but to, to see that this is it, you're just a change thing. And, and I, I mean, you could never look at a woman the same again. You could never, it'd be so hard uh, for someone to have this on an experiential level and then the next day be a misogynist or like, right. or, or a chauvinist or whatever. And, and it'd be so incredibly hard uh, because the truth is something completely opposite of that, you know? So it's, this is this is all part of, of the the return of the divine feminine. I think this is what what's going on, and I, I see it in guys like I see you, and I I met you know a bunch of the, the people that come to this place like they're super aware of of the, the the this rebalancing that's that's taking hold, and and like all rebalancings, it'll probably swing to one side too far before it comes back to center. Uh, I don't know where it is in its shift. I don't know where the pendulum is. I don't know. Uh, but that's likely how this would, would occur, right? I think so. And I mean, I've been 
thinking about this term balance, because it's something it's used tons, whether it's equanimity, balance. And I think a lot of us get this idea of kind of the Libra scales where things are evenly in proportion uh-huh. to each other. And so I've been trying to use this term harmony a little bit more. So if you I take like, like a, tri- yeah, if you take a triad of a scale, right? Three notes, like ACE, you have A minor there. Sometimes you got to play the E a little bit louder. Sometimes you have to play the C a little bit louder because you want a different effect. So I think we have this flexibility and freedom to play certain notes. And I do think this is the time where if we're just tracing back through the Abrahamic religions, 2,500, 3,000 years, I mean, the patriarchy just, it fucked up, right? We just lopped off. It's just decapitated every possible thing to do with the feminine. And it was probably a fear-based thing. Logic analytics said that, no, this can't really be what's going on. So we lopped it off. And that, that was a terrible tragedy. And I think we're still experiencing, not think, I know we're still experiencing kind of the aftershocks, even so many thousands of years after. It's I, de- Yeah. And it's definitely happening. Like we can sense it. I also have a, a cockamamie theory that I do believe that um, cannabis is a big part of this reintegration of the feminine divine. I think for a lot of people, myself included, um, it makes you, if you allow it, and this is again, any substance, whether we're talking about plant medicines, whether we're talking about anything, this all has to do with a mindful awareness of what we are using these things for. So I, I smoke marijuana daily, but every time I smoke it, I say, I'm smoking it for this reason. I am mindfully doing it. If I notice I'm getting a little out of whack with it, I will reassess my relationship. And I think that's important for whatever we do. Uh, back to the feminine divine thing. I do think the cannabis is tuning or allowing people to tune into these frequencies a little bit easier, compassion, um, unconditional love, not just the words like you're saying, but the actual experience quality of it. And I think that's helpful. Like you're pointing out, and this is a very, very important thing, the pendulum does have a tendency to swing a little bit too far back to one side. So being mindful of that and trying to feel how do we have these things work in concert with each other? How do we use the anal? The, the analyzation and the logic of our uh, left brain to use the creative, intuitive aspects, that, that's really what's going to create this paradigm of uh, what I'm thinking and hoping will emerge over the next 50 to 100 years, however long. And I love seeing this reflected back in 3D reality with someone like you, who you, you really do seem to be embodying and integrating these two kind of wonderful hemispheres we have. I'm trying very hard. I don't know if I'm, <laughs> if I'm successful at it. I'm sure that my, my fiance would say no, but <laughs> I'm really trying. So the, but, but I do see, I see like that, that, you know, you know, both of us really have, have given up everything. I've, I've sold all my cars, all my this, all my that to, to be uh, in a place where, where people are coming together to do this thing and and when they do this, the 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 what what results from this remerging is someone who is balanced. That's mm. the that's the whole thing. It it, it, it harmonizes a human. It, mm. That's amazing, amazing, amazing thing that occurs. Mm. And when you see the people come through, and you see, you know that they're going home, and you know like that they're going to affect you know hundreds of people or thousands right. of people by being who they are. You know, this is nothing, there's nothing here that's created. This is all stuff that's discovered, right? This yes, thank here. you. You know, it's already here. We're not doing anything that that's new or different. As a matter of fact, we're doing something that's probably a 10,000-year-old tradition, you know, that or, or, or more uh, of, of reuniting someone's soul. This is something that's, that's, that's ancient that, we're, that we've probably lost the handle on uh, around the time of Jesus, around this this thing when other traditions went away, that but this uh, reuniting of the soul and the symbol of the yank and all of that stuff of, of of being in oneself is is old stuff that looks new because uh, you know people are saying oh that crazy plant medicine and that that you know that crazy twenty thousand year old plant medicine <laughs> trick you know <laughs> yeah that old thing that that crazy thing that's been around forever that people have been using to actually better themselves that thing exactly. yeah I mean I love so much of what you just said there the the, the remembering aspect or the uncovering I think mm-hmm. is key because I think a lot of times what can happen is when we get kind of these downloads or these metaphysical imprints into us, 
um, we can externalize these experiences and say, oh, well, this is something that gave me that. Um, that's not really who I am. This is something that did that for me. But as you go along, you do discover that this stuff is innate. This is what every mystic tradition has ever referred to. This is what Socrates proved through the Socratic method when he was saying, you don't learn anything. You don't gain knowledge. You remember. You remember. I can prove that this is happening. Um, and he did. And I think that's a very important thing because that allows us to develop the faculty of inner knowing. So when we're having those questions like, hey, did I really just sell all of my assets and put all of my money into this thing because a plant medicine told me it was going to happen? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you did, but you did it with this knowing that is, and this is, the, and this is another thing, and you touched on a little bit, this idea of faith. Faith is a dirty word for a lot of people in the Western wow. world for a variety of reasons. Some people are brought up in religious faiths that really just don't serve them and don't have any interest. Some people feel that it's a weak thing to do. Yeah. I'm going to surrender my ability to think and judge things to something that I don't really can't even prove. That's stupid. That's not, that's going against the scientific method. However, surrendering is probably one of the hardest things you can ever do. Agreed. The amount of courage <laughs> that you have to summon up to let go of your idea of what the world is or who you are, that's a tremendously tough thing to do. Yeah. So when you kind of can let go and get that to happen though it's also an amazing thing and, and just to and give pause. a little yeah and just to give an allegory of this whole money happiness thing um the past year has been a financially difficult period for me and i always imagined years ago when when you know if my business changed or money wasn't coming in the same way how miserable i'd be how oh god it would just be awful the world would be collapsing around me that's not what's happening. And, and no you know, different. it's, 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 <laughs> it's, no different. it's not that it's no different. It's that I actually, because of the other things that are going on in my life, I have a kid. We just moved into a new house. Wow. I love where I'm living. I'm meeting so many awesome people. I'm happier than I was and I was making a shitload of money three years yep. ago. So it just proves go. the point that as you continue to get in touch with the things that are going on in really with you and your relationship to the world at large, that dictates your real state in the world more than anything else. And they're not mutually exclusive. And that's another thing wow. I would love to point out. You can make money and you can be spiritually fulfilled. Absolutely. Yeah. Money's a neutral tool. You can Absolutely. give money to someone to make their life better. You can give money to something to make your life better. It's a totally independent, neutral thing. Unfortunately, we live in a paradigm where most people are not of the giving, generous variety of what's going to be going on, but that doesn't mean that they're not. So we don't have to hold on to this mythology of the struggling, mystic, uh, artist, creative who is just beaten down by the world because it doesn't support them. Uh, uh, absolutely right. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, did you get a chance now to look at the, the movie, The Reality of Truth? I haven't looked at it yet. I've seen it okay. ever across my screen. I'm going to YouTube to watch it. <laughs> I gotta tell you the craziest shit. Yeah, this is, yeah. This is the, yeah. The, you know, the the guys that edited the movie made it a little bit different in the movie. Yeah. This is the truth. I had a, I had an oceanfront place in uh, Santa Monica, and and, and I was renting, and uh, and it was a real nice house and all right, and it was it was right by the pier. And a friend of mine who's a hair cutter, a, a stylist yeah. for the stars and everything, he's like, hey, dude, do you want to, this is the height of my fucked upness. Yeah. He goes, do you want to, do you want to uh, meet Deepak Chopra? And I'm like, sure. He said, okay, listen, can we use your living room in a couple of days and you can meet him? And I'm like, sure, sure, sure. And lo and behold, uh, the day came and I had forgotten that they were coming. I, I was... On cocaine, I was I was stirring spaghetti sauce all night. I was making, I was doing cocaine, stirring spaghetti sauce. I had two girls over. There were booze everywhere. All of a sudden, the 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 the, the elevator <laughs> rang, and I'm like, oh fuck! And I remembered what was going on. I pushed these girls down the back stairs, and like they went down the stairs, and I tried to keep the place up, and I put on a shirt and everything. But I was like poked up and shit and I, I meet Deepak Chopra and they go into my living room and they film something and I don't know what it is this is the truth mm. I never I never listened to it da, da, da. I, I was just oh I got to meet him and I was done and then I, I turned the sauce off and then 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 when they left I put the sauce back on now listen this four years later 
I've done plant medicine, had this experience, uh, actually three years later, done plant medicine, had this experience. I fell out of touch with the guy who was the, the hairstylist. All of a sudden, I'm reading a head. I op- I bought this place. I'm reading a headline about Lindsay Lowen in the New York Post, and it says that she did ayahuasca. And then down the bottom, I see a video, and it's it's a Kickstarter campaign, and it has Deepak Chopra in my living room. <laughs> what the fuck is this thing about? And I hit the I hit the video, and it starts and it's about plant medicine. And I didn't know that. And they were, so I contacted the guy. I said, hey, is this movie still being filmed? He said, yeah. I said, let me talk to them because everything has changed. And and that's how I got in that movie was, how the hell could that even happen? It's, It's crazy, right? Well, I mean, it goes back into what I alluded to before, that time isn't really what we like to think of it as. Certainly, we experience it linearly. No one's going to argue that we don't get older and there's, there's a progression to it. However, that plays with the concept of what's going on, right? There's a broader theme. There is a symbol there that is penetrating through time and space and kind of connecting dots. And I think for those of us, I don't know if we're just like stupid or like we just need, but like some of us need those really big, like, let me connect the dots for you guys because this is really what's going on. Some people just get it. Some of us don't. And we need to be slick. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a famous, I think it was Marpa in, in Tibetan Buddhism. He was a, like a yogic mystic in Tibetan Buddhism. And he had a student, I think it was Tolopa. And the way he got him to realize enlightenment is he slapped him with his sandal. He <laughs> said, you know, it's a great story because like you think of compassionate, you know, no violence, you know, but that's the way he did it. And it proves that sometimes some of us need these very drastic <laughs> things to solidify concepts or ideas. And I love that, man. That's such a, that's an amazing story. It's crazy. And then, and then in that movie, like it, it goes through the things that were happening to me. It's, it's, a, and, the, and like, it's a documentary, but it's, it's pretty good. There's, there's 30 some thought leaders in there. There's Deepak Chopra is saying to telling people go to, go down to Peru or to Costa Rica and drink the medicine. <laughs> like what the hell, what is this coming to, right? That Deepak Chopra is telling people, you know? Yeah, I mean, but it, I think it speaks to, we live in a time where we can conceptually understand quite a bit. And it's one yeah. thing to kind of get a concept, but the, this right. is another Buddhist thing. This is what Buddha said, just don't take my word for it. Directly experience what I'm talking about, and then you can let me know if you believe it. Yep. Don't just I take it. That. And And that really is what it's about. So, Let's talk a little bit about, more about plant medicine. I mean, so like I said, I've never done it. There's a calling that is uh, clearly people get. Um, I know when I get a calling. I know when I don't. I imagine at some point in my future, I will be getting the calling to do it. Seems that, pretty switched on as it is. That's what people tell me. I mean, that's what everyone who tells me ayahuasca, they're like, you're either going to love it and like transcend to some crazy dimension, but like you seem like you got a lot of these lessons. Mm-hmm. I, I was... I did have an experience. I've spoken about it briefly on this podcast, never in depth. There's a later ep- episode coming, but I had an experience on LSD when I was about 22 where I didn't come down for three months. And I, you know, the LSD had clearly yeah. left my system, yeah. but I was still tripping. And I mean, I yeah. was full on tripping. I don't mean that like, oh yeah, it was kind of crazy. Like my reality, I was in some other dimensional place, but still within the world. And that, I got a lot of, uh, it took me years after the fact to reintegrate. It wasn't a couple of weeks, you know what I mean? Like I, I had to kind of basically separate from the experience to process it after the fact. But once I did, it really helped me and it made a lot of sense. But with plant medicine, what would you say to someone, and I'm not using this as myself, but someone who's interested, who's maybe hearing this conversation, who's heard other episodes of this podcast and will tune into a lot of other things, who maybe is getting the calling um, what would you say to someone who's potentially interested in either going to Rhythmia or somewhere else to experience what you're talking about? I would, I would tell them that no matter what, to do it. <laughs> to do it, you know, because the, the, as long as the medicine is really the medicine, that it's, it's really ayahuasca, it's, it's really the medicine. And, and then just to be careful, the energy around the people who they're doing it with. Yes, yes, yes. Super, super careful, like about about uh you know the the provider or the shaman or or whoever is distributing the medicine it's super important to 
that everything is clean and mm. right, you know, that's, so that's a little bit dicey if you're talking about doing it on someone's, uh, uh, like someone's living room in, in, in Hollywood, you know, that's, that's thank you for crazy. talking about yeah. this. And yes. that's a little nuts. And, and for a lot of us too, I want to tell you, I've done it in the jungle and I, I spent most of the night like being afraid because of creepy crawlies. Thank you. Like, <laughs> 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 And I didn't have the best, the best time of it, you know? Uh, so, so I just like try to pick some place where I knew that the people were honest, had integrity, that the medicine was, was right, that, that is safe. Uh, you know, like us, we, we're lucky cause we are the, we're the world's first and only medically licensed government sanctioned ayahuasca place in the, in the world that, That's amazing. uh, you know, the customer, we actually have a license for different things, but homeopathic medicine, drugs and alcohol addiction, all kinds of licenses. And in one of those licenses, uh, in one of those licenses, it delineates the, the, the plants that we can use in the ayahuasca vine is, is one of the plants that we're mm. allowed to use. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, this, this doing it in a place where you're comfortable, where you have a safe, a safe container, where you have support because because in this process you see your soul does not want to make up with you until it's sure that you have seen yourself that's right and so in this first step of seeing yourself that's where if if you're not if there's not a lot of love surrounding you it can be a really hard night uh and and so you want to be in a place where where everybody is is where you're the focus of everybody, where everybody's supporting you. Supporting, yeah. uh, You know, like you need this support because because sometimes if you're seeing yourself as you for the first time, you know, it can be a uh, um, an interesting evening. You know, it's an, an interesting evening. So so having that support super super important. I'm going to tell you that that anybody who has the opportunity to do this medicine, especially if they're in a fast paced life or they're in a they're in a place where they don't have a lot of time for meditation or a lot of time to, to do a lot of self work that could possibly lift the veil just so they could see if you're at all time restricted, by all means, I'm going to tell you, it's, a, it's an amazing way uh, to get that first look and to get to, to, to a place of peace real mm. quick. Mm. No, I, I mean, I would suggest it. I can see, I mean, I can hear as you say that the effect that it had on you and so many other people. And I love that the real intention and aspiration, I can tell this without you explicitly saying it, is that if you can make an impact in one person's life and they go back and are a better partner to their partner, a better parent to their kids, or better kids to their parents, better in their community and their workspace, this is, there's this idea of these thangas where we see these Buddhas and there's these other Buddhas flowing out of them and these other Buddhas flowing out. This is how we do it. If we want to talk about the best political, social, any action we can take, it's working on ourselves right. first. That is how it happens. That's how we change reality, truthfully. And it's not just as simple as like, oh, I'm picking this up and I've changed reality. This has a resonant effect that we can't perceptually pick up on you know, unless we're on plant medicine sometimes yeah, or we're meditating. Though, but you're right. Yeah, it that really is. Right. Yeah, this interconnectedness of us is, is such a paramount and important thing. And when you do tune into that, it does, like you said, like the, the analogy you gave of, uh, you know, if you really tune into what, um, how you're impacting someone by being a misogynist, it's like very hard to maintain that cognitive dissonance. <laughs> it's it like, is. You're gonna, and if you do, you're gonna be miserable. And this is this violating this core sense. And what you're talking about, the soul, you do have to get to a point where you actually can acknowledge. You have to sign that contract with a full awareness of what you're signing. There's no like devil's trick here. There's no like I'm gonna get you to sign, and then I pull the nuke deep on you. Whoops, I'm a demon. <laughs> That's not actually how it works. This is for everyone, including our own best interests. So, just to delve in a little bit more. Um, about some of these conversations, like, what was it like when you started? You're, you you came from a place where you probably weren't thinking about the soul very much to actually seeing and experiencing this kind of separation, and then this merging, and then this overall path. Like, 
what what were some of these initial kind of like conceptual things like for you as after you got past like the initial hurdle of like okay this is mind blowing what the fuck yeah. after that being like okay I'm really I'm tuning into something here something is happening what am I tuning into what was that like for you when like the the physical experience itself that night the the, the, the physical but then also the just like the experiences of having this and learning it and like trying to like you know yeah. grok it like integrate it was, it. it was so it was so amazing to me that that I was so excited uh, after you, you have to see that for for you know forty six or forty seven years I lived the same life every day. Mm. It was Groundhog Day uh, because there was this there was this separation that I was resisting. And the thing is, the moon showed me that if you resist the separation, if you say that it's not so, if you deny it and resist it, your life will stay exactly the same. The faces will change, but it will stay exactly the yes. same. So, so here I put this back together and the next day shit's different. And I'm like, holy shit, the chocolate tastes different. The coffee tastes different. This tastes different. The moon is different. The moon will never be the same. This like <laughs> different. And, and I was in a, my first day of, of like a child where I had like, I don't know what's going to happen next. And I didn't know like what was going to happen next. It was a, it was exciting, like, uh, because I was a child again. I was really a child again, where mm. I did not know what was going to happen next. I didn't know how I was going to, like, I didn't understand life. I, everything that I knew of life was blown away in one night, and now I have this, which is something I don't know. You know it's like a dog who chases cars. I, I caught the car now. <laughs> What am I going to do with it? I can't drive it. I can't, you know, I have a- Drag it, it away, it, yeah. You know? <laughs> like, I didn't know what to do with it, right? So, uh, so it was super exciting. This, mm. is, this is the earmark of that time for me was that I just remember, like, the, the few weeks it took to get my feet on the ground was super exciting because, uh, because it was, you know, the first time I was ever questioning anything. Mm. I knew everything before that. I knew- I knew Chinese people drove like this and girls acted this way. And this is how uh, people from Texas eat. And this is what people from here think. And this is that. And I, I just knew everything. Right. I think gonna, you know, if you short a market on a Friday with da, 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 it's going to do this. I knew, I knew what was going to happen. Da, 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 da. And all of a sudden I knew nothing. And it was super exciting. Pe mm. People, it sounds scary, but oh my God, it's like, just like a, a child again, where you can actually have fun. And actually have fun because he didn't know all the answers. It was mm. it was fun. Like oh shit, the door's locked. Like oh, there you go. Well, here's the thing: if it's locked, go this way or this way. Or, you know? Yes, it's, it's, yes, it's yes. Fun. It's just fun. Uh, I love that you're talking about this too because. You know, when we get put in the educational system or our cultural system, we learn the value of knowing things, right? Uh -huh. If we know the answer, we raise our hand, the teacher says, you did a good job, we feel good. So this, this puts a premium on knowing, and I'm not shitting on knowing. I love knowing it's plenty right. of things. It's yeah. great. Yeah. I love knowing how to play music. I know there's yeah. so many great things. Yeah. However, not getting attached to the idea of you knowing is a really important thing because then it does open up this flexibility. It's like if you do the same thing every day like you're talking about, but then one day you do everything the opposite, like a George Costanza. Your entire, <laughs> exactly. everything changes. Your whole yeah. world has changed because you've yeah. just broken out of your own kind of neural pathways that have yeah. shaped and dictated your perceptions and your reality. And that's a wonderful place to live. Yes, it can be scary. Yes, it can be terrifying that you don't know what's going to happen, but it's also like one of the most liberating feelings you can possibly have. Okay. And then yeah. the, probably the second best thing or the, another great thing that happens is when everything doesn't immediately go to shit because you don't know everything and everything doesn't immediately collapse, oh my God, well, oh, what's look, going look what's going yeah. on here. Maybe this isn't the way we thought it was. I mean, there's so much uh, so that much. we could talk about, man. I would, first of all, I would love to have another conversation down the line. And I mean, well. yeah, and it goes without saying, like anything I can do to Come support. I, I, trust Come me, we're going to be talking, my friend. <laughs> but anything I can do to support help outside of this, we'll talk um, after this episode, you know, about some specific tangible things I can do. But I, I, I would love to, because man, like I, I meet a lot of people um, 
a lot of people have different perspectives and ways they're doing things, but it is very clear to me that you are tuned in to something oh, very you. real and very special. And I love supporting that. So oh, before we you. end, I have three quick questions and then sure. one larger question. Um, so here we go. Uh, what is your favorite color? My favorite color is not a color white. <laughs> cool. Love it. Love it. What is your favorite number? Uh, three. Cool. Love that too. What is your favorite animal? A dog. Cool. Also, <laughs> also wonderful answer. Um, okay, last question. What is a practical tip that you've learned in your life that's helped you that you could share with people, with people, with people, people like them? Uh-huh. Uh, I think... And, you know, it was so, um, the, I guess the biggest thing that guides me now was, was, you know, I was Catholic and I'm going to tell you something. I didn't even really believe in God. I, I didn't really believe that there was anything else. It was just as insurance. I was Catholic as insurance in case, in case something was. But I want to tell you, when you, when you get to speak to source, and you know that there's a source. The thing that I can tell other people is that, that if you haven't gotten to a position where you've spoken to source and it's answered back, whatever that means, please borrow my faith because, because, because just knowing that there is more, just that one thing uh, changes everything. And if you, can, if, you, if you haven't had it yet, Listen to my voice. It's really there. I get to visit it all the time. It's there. It's there, and it's all around us. So, so if you can just carry that with you, that, that there is something. There is something. Maybe, maybe we don't know how to define it because it's just it's so much, but there is this thing in it, and you're not alone. And even the more alone you think you are, the more alone you're not. You're <laughs> not alone. You know, just if people can just get up and just go, you know what, I'm not alone. There's something with me. Then it changes everything. It's, yes. the, it's the best tip you could ever give any, anybody. It's so true. And, and I will say you have to allow it to happen. If you're pushing away and actively not believing then it's yeah. never going to approach you. It's like, a, it's like an animal out in the forest. If you're like, get away from me, get away from me. I don't want you to come here. That, it's never going to come up to you. It'd have to be right. like a really, really <laughs> intoxicated animal. Uh, so maybe they'll approach I, you. But I, I agree. <laughs> I love that, man. And I, another thing just to put a, to a button in this one, there, there are many people who have very transcendental and ecstatic and mystical experiences. Okay. Not everyone is able to communicate those experiences and remain grounded. Um, and that's been me at various times in my life. So the more people like you who are able to speak about and show that, yes, this stuff sounds kind of crazy. Yes, you're talking to the moon and Jesus and psychedelics and all these other things. However, to not dismiss it out of hand because those things are happening and to recognize there maybe is a thread here that if we keep pulling on, we're going to get a little more insight into what's actually going on, the better off we're going to be collectively. So I love, man, I love that Jen connected us. Um, I love what you're doing oh, and too. consider me uh, a friend and an ally and anything I can do to kind of make your vision a reality. I'm happy to do, man. This has been I really amazing. appreciate it. No, thank you so much. It was so nice. My pleasure. You. Yes, absolutely. We'll stay in contact. I'll, I'll Please, let Brandy know this went great, but this has been uh, tremendous and have an excellent day, man. Thank you so much, brother. Cool. Have a good one. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.
Thank you for listening to this episode. Gerard, as I said, what an interesting, awesome guy. If you want to find more out about Gerard or Rhythmia, go to rhythmia.com. Um, you will find links to everything that was discussed on this episode at syncpodcast.com. Also, mindpodnetwork.com. There'll be episode pages for all of this stuff. Um, really big thank you to Jennifer Sodini, who hooked me up with Gerard. She went down to Rhythmia and participated in some of these ceremonies. You will be hearing about those. I think I'm going to release the episode I did with her next week, so stay tuned for that. You'll find a little bit more out about Rhythmia and kind of what goes on there. Um, as I mentioned in the intro, if you're interested in creative evolution, stay tuned. I will be giving out the URL for the landing page, which should be out uh, in a few days, uh, within the week when this is coming out. Uh, so I think this is going to come out on May 31st. So the first week of June, there'll be news about this. Um, really very happy and excited about it. Just stay tuned. Just planting the seeds. Thank you to everyone who's donated, contributed, rated, reviewed, all of the ways you can support the show. We're growing. May has been the biggest month for downloads for Synchronicity. We're closing in on some great milestones. We just clipped 300,000 downloads for all time of synchronicity. That's really cool. I think in the not too distant future, we'll be crossing that half million downloads mark. I don't know what any of these numbers mean, except that it shows that people do enjoy this, which makes me very happy because I enjoy doing it. So that's all. I will see you next week.